what's really great about going over it now, it will help you understand increasing and decreasing the accounts when you're looking at the balance sheet and the profit and loss. Now I will preface with, this isn't always something I can remember on my own, which is why I created the cheat sheet. I, like I said, I print it, I have it on my desktop so I can just like open it up with a couple clicks. It's something that's really useful to have because I use a lot of journal entries, but it's also useful for anyone to have. And I believe that it helps you understand the financial statements a little better. So going over this now and showing you guys what it looks like using the QuickBooks Online um, examples will give you a better feel and understanding about how the debits and credits work, how the double entry accounting works. Because I have talked to many other bookkeepers in the past, people I've trained, people I haven't trained, and accountants and CPAs that have been, you know, veterans in this game for how long? And they still have trouble with remembering debits and credits. Like, you know, to increase uh, an asset account, am I going to debit the account or am I going to credit the account? Journal entries just simply scare people. So I want to help alleviate that stress and that worry by going over it right now. So let's jump back into QuickBooks Online. And we're going to open up the company, the sample company, Craig's Design and Landscaping. And you can tell we're here because it's a sample company. And what I want to do is I want to bring up the, um, I'm actually going to bring this up so that you guys can see, oh, not this, <laughs> sorry, accountant tools. <laughs> I want to go over to journal entries. Let's look at this first before jumping back to our slides. Go journal entries. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and minimize my head so you guys can see. Let's get me out of there. All right. So journal entry looks like this. You're going to have the journal date. This is the date that the entry or the transaction, right? Everything that we're doing where we enter things in manually or add it via the bank feed, that's a transaction. So if you hear me use the word transaction, I'm actually talking about where we created the debit, credit, sales, you know, invoice, bill. That's the transaction. They're all transaction types. So the transaction type here would be a journal entry. The journal entry date, this is the date where the transaction lives as far as where it lives on the balance sheet or the PL and where it hits on the GL, right? So if I have it for the date of 10, 8, 2024, the date of this recording, then that's where it's going to show up. If I needed it to show up anywhere else, say the previous month and put it there for, you know, let's go with, I'm sorry, September 30th. This is where it'll show up on my GL. All right, that'll be the date of the transaction where I can find it. So I'm gonna leave it there for now. Uh, the journal entry number, people use different styles of number and we'll go over the way I do it. So you guys can use just one, two, three, four, five, you know, make up your own list. You can use the date. I have my own variation. Other people have theirs. It's completely up to you as long as you're consistent with it. So the account, this is like I mentioned in our, the, uh, not our theories, uh, our terminology. This is where we're going to find all of our account, uh, chart of accounts and accounts. So um, all of the things we've created and that's already been pre added per the QuickBooks. Debits credits. This is where the money will appear or the dollar amounts will appear to coincide with this account. And I'm trying to make this, you know, as user friendly of an explanation as possible. And um, I will show you guys, you know, how, how to go ahead and use journal entries. But the description is the description of this of this transaction, what you're doing. You can be as descriptive as possible. Again, the more description, the better. And then the name. What's interesting about the name is this is where we can connect the customer or vendor associated or even employee associated with this particular line. All right, so if we don't add this, say this vendor to the next following lines, it will only show up under their history for this line here, which is fine. Sometimes you need to do that. Sometimes you don't. All right. So I'm just going to delete that. Now let's go back over into our slides and let's look at the cheat sheet. And let's jump back into the debits and credits cheat sheet. 
here we go. So I have them all listed here, assets, expenses, liabilities, equity, and revenue. Pretty much all of the accounts that would be used in everyday bookkeeping cleanup or just bookkeeping in general. And I've got it separated in increased dollar amount by and decreased dollar amount by because um, when you're looking at your report and you're like, hey, you know, <laughs> I've got to, you know, my my bank is off by this much or uh, this account's off by that much. We need to increase that dollar amount. How will we do it with the journal entry or double uh, double entry accounting? You would, in order to say, raise the dollar amount, increase the number, you would debit the assets. And to decrease that dollar amount and bring that number back down, you would put the dollar amount in credits. And same goes with expenses. To increase an expense that you'll see, where do we find expenses? On the PL. Then we are going to increase it, uh, put that number in the debit column that we recently just saw on our journal entry um, transaction in QuickBooks. And then again, decrease by credit, uh, crediting that dollar amount. The difference between these two and these three is that they're just opposite. Liabilities, remember, it's in the nature of how a liability is documented as far as accounting goes with the dollar amount, you know, like with what the company does. How is that dollar amount recorded on our reports? Um, liabilities and equity and revenue are opposite. To increase the amount that we owe in liabilities, to increase, it, we'll need to credit that amount. To decrease, we would debit that amount. Um, so like say we want to, uh, you know, we owe more to the credit card company. Well, to increase that dollar amount, we need to credit, we need to use that credit, right? And to decrease that amount that we owe our credit cards, we pay it. So we debit this account, we lessen the credit, and we bring down the dollar amount and so in order to do that, we put that dollar amount in debit. The same goes for equity and revenue. All right, so let's see uh, a live you know, um, example here. And down here, it's simply just telling you what assets, liabilities, equity, and revenue accounts are so that we don't have to go back. That's why it's a cheat sheet. You know, try to make it easy, a one-stop shop spot when we're dealing with debits and credits. All right, so we can jump out of the journal entry here. Yes, we want to leave without saving. And we're going to go into a couple of our reports here. We're just going to kind of use by memory. We're going to use some checking account information and some PL information. All right, let's scroll down here. All right, so our checking account shows 1201. $1,201. So keep that in mind as we're doing this exercise. So you can see how debits and credits are affected um, when we use the journal entry methods at any time. And you, again, can use this journal entry method for whatever suits you and your client. There's never just one answer to all of the, you know, all of bookkeeping. <laughs> every business owner thinks differently and every business is different, therefore. So 1201, keep that in mind. We're going to jump over to the PL. Here's a little tricky trick if you didn't know. If you click on net income down here, it'll take you to the PL. Ta da! Oh, let me. Ta da! Better. <laughs> Ta da! There. So it'll take you to the same date range that your balance sheet was pulling to pull that net profit and tell you where it came from. So it was 1201 was our checking account. So what's in our bank or what our bank shows as of what our books tell us. And let's say that we are going to go to the store and um, our client or not we, maybe our clients go to the store and they are going to buy some office, um, excuse me, office expenses. All right. And we're going to spend $10. Let, let's make it a big number. Let's say we're going to spend $100 here. All right. So let's go ahead and remember that it's 1201 on the bank and then 1808 here in office expenses. The reason why I want to use a hundred dollars is so that you guys can see the drastic difference. All right, so I'm just gonna stay here in the office expenses. I'm gonna 
pull up my journal entry from the accountant's tool and I will use today's date. All right, so journal entry number for the sake of this exercise will leave at one. So the account will be checking. And remember, to increase the dollar amount, right? I'm gonna increase it, I would use the debits. So it, if you think about it, increasing a checking account would require a deposit, would require a payment to our, our client's company. And in this case, we're actually spending money at the store for office supplies. So it's gonna go in the credits. And we can leave a description here. We can put um, maybe paper, um, post-its, and uh, pens. I don't know. It costs a hundred dollars. It's very expensive paper. Well, sometimes paper can be. And if they have like, say a staples, oh, staples account or something, if they don't, we could just say we add it. You guys can add customers here. We're just going to add it uh, as staples. Okay. Just a quick add. And I will put as much information again. If I if I have it, I put down as much detail as possible for anything and everything I do. But for the sake of exercising and using our QuickBooks online examples, we won't do that just yet. So checking, then we set office supplies or office expenses. If you just push tab, it'll automatically pre-fill what offsets the top line or what offsets say you were all the way down here what offsets the next line and it'll automatically bring down the description if you just from here click tab and it'll do that so that way you don't have to spend that extra few seconds highlighting and pasting and copying and all that stuff so the office expenses sorry staples actually won't be here that's my fault i got a little ahead of myself this is the bank line the checking account. I don't include the bank's name here because the bank is not a vendor and it's not a customer. Um, it can be a vendor if I'm if it's charging me money, you know, like bank fees. But we normally just don't usually use the bank name. Uh, but here is where I'll use Staples. Oh, it should have been a vendor. My fault. So Staples, just pretend it's a vendor just an example. And then we're going to save and close. And we're going to look at how this affected our statements. All right. As you can see, now the office expenses increased because we debited the account. And by debiting the account, we increased the expenses. Let's go back one, back to the balance sheet. And by crediting, not debiting, crediting the checking account, we're down not 1201, but we're down to 1101. So I hope that makes sense there. You guys can play around with it, and I do encourage you to do so. Um, play around with how you guys want to move money from the assets to the, you know, and spend money and expenses, liabilities, what that would look like. If you have trouble and this is something that, you know, you've always struggled with, or maybe you're working with a client now, or even in your own books and you're a business owner, this is something that can help you guys um, speed up some bookkeeping cleanup and some troubleshooting. So if you need help, just reach out to me and my team.